Hi, this is Fancy Peacock. Um, I was given this beautiful black throated canary specimen, um, and I thought it might be a good opportunity to walk you through some of its plumage fe features, the major feather tracts, and all the different parts of a bird, and so on. Um, I'm not sure what actually happened to the specimen. It doesn't seem to have any sort of damage or, or blood or anything like that. It might have um, flown into a window. These window strikes are or a major uh, cause of mortality in many birds. So it's called the black-throated canary because of this little bit of, of black on the chin there. It's more pronounced in males than females and more pronounced in adults than juveniles, but very variable. Um, it's also re reflected in the scientific name Cryphagra atrogularis. Okay, so let's have a look. Where do we start? Let's, um, let's start with the wings, which is um, often the most useful thing Identification in many, in many sort of more complex uh, bird identification um, problems. Okay, let's have a look. So that's the, the right wing that you see there. And what can we identify here? Firstly, one of the most prominent features um, is, 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 is these three feathers here. One, two, three. And those are called the tertials. So they're basically the, the innermost secondaries. Um, and most birds have, well, at least most passion birds have three of them. Um, and they sort of play a protective role in covering um, the majority of the, of the wing when the wing is folded. Okay, so three tertials there. You can see them there? One, two, three. Okay. Um, and then what is the section projecting beyond the, the, the tertials here? Those are the primaries. Um, the tips are the outermost primary. So the primary feathers are these long, these long wing feathers that are used for flight, for, um, to, for maneuvering during flight. Okay, so canaries have, have nine primaries, um, in addition to a vestigial small little one hidden under the cupboards there. Um, okay, let's see if we can count them. Okay, so that's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So those are the primaries. Those ones you see there. So it's 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then these ones here, those are the secondaries. So those are used to generate lift during flight. Okay, so secondaries, let's see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the three tertials, these three that we spoke about. Okay, so while we're here, let's have a look quickly um, for primary imagination, which is basically that very Subtle narrowing of the of the outermost uh, of, of the outer vein of the outer vein of the of the feather. You see that sort of little gap there. So this bird would have its um, P7 and P6 emarginated. P7 fairly emarginated. P6 slightly emarginated. Okay. Um, all right. Let's flip it. Notice again. Have a look at the cupboards. Okay, so we've got the three tertials, then we've got the primaries. So often in sort of advanced bird identification, people talk about uh, primary projection. And what that means is basically the, the length of primaries visible beyond the tertials. So in this case, it's, it would be that section there. Um, how many primary tips can we see? One, two, three, four. Maybe a fifth one, but basically four primary tips visible. Okay. So that's the tertials, the primaries, and then this pale panel here, that, those are the edges of the secondary feathers that are lined up to form that nice pale panel. Let's look at the, the wing cupboards. Um, okay, so these prominent ones here, those are the greater cupboards or greater wing cupboards. And often in birds that, that have a, a wing bar, a white or pale wing bar, it's the tips of these cupboards that form that, form that wing bar. Now, if you look very closely, you can actually tell that the two generations of feathers, so these outer ones are more worn, and then you can see they're slightly whiter, whereas this inner one seems to be a freshly melted feather, which is, um, which is browner and, and, and sort of more, more sharply edged. Um, okay, so we've got the greater cupboards, then we've got the median cupboards, which are these ones. Um, and it's quite interesting to see that, it, at least in passerine birds, the, the greater cupboards overlap from the inside out whereas the median covers overlap from, from the outside in. You'll see this feather lies on top and that one below, whereas in the median covers the, the outer ones lie on top. 
Um, all right, so so we've got the greater wing covers and the medium wing covers, and you can basically just see a little bit of the lesser covers there around the carpal region of the bird. So the wing has a tendency to settle in a sort of natural pocket from the side of the breast, right about there, where the bird tucks in its wing. So often when birds are cold and they fluff up their feathers, um, much of the sort of shoulder region is, is obscured by these breast side feathers and also the scapulars, which are these feathers up here. Okay, so those are the wing covers. Okay, so what else can we see here? Um, this little triangle peeking out here, those are the primary covets. Primary covets, and then these big feathers, these prominent ones here, those are the alula feathers, which, which are basically attached to the thumb. And these are used to prevent stalling when the bird is flying at low velocities. Um, basically, there's usually three, three of them visible, three alula feathers, also called the bastard wing. Um, if we open the wing, you'll see. So this is the right wing spread out. You'll see those are the primary cupboards and the alulas there. Uh, another thing, that, something else that I want to show you is that the on the flight feathers, the outer outer vein is much narrower than the inner vein. So there's a there's an obvious asymmetry there. Because the the you know the outside of the wings sort of slices through the air, um, but that asymmetry is much less pronounced in the inner wing feathers, these secondaries. See how much broader the outer vein is there. So that's the outer vein there and the inner vein. Such a beautiful design how this um, how these feathers slide under each other. Surely one of nature's most incredibly evolved structural features. Let's look at the tail next. So canaries and most passerine birds for that matter have 12 tail feathers arranged in pairs. So you've got a central pair, um, T1. So tail feathers are also called um, rectrices. Let's see what I'm doing here. So you've got a central pair and then they move outwards. So it's T1 to T6 on the outside. Okay. And when the feathers are neatly arranged, which is not the case here, um, the central ones lie on top and the outer ones are below. So if we flip it over you can see that's the, the outermost tail feather on the bird's right side. <clears throat> Let's try and spread it out a bit. Okay, so these pale panels might not be visible um, when you see the tail from above because you're looking at the outer or the innermost um, there. Right, so these are the upper upper tail covers. Not actually the rump. This would be the rump, the yellow. Um, in this in this case, the, the upper tail covers are, are white. But um, it's often difficult to distinguish between the two groups. Many waders, for example, when people say they've got white rumps, they actually mean the upper tail covers are white. That's the impression it creates. So these um, canaries have these beautiful white fringes along the tail feathers, as you can often see when they fly up. Um, See if we can dig around a little bit here. So these rump feathers have got grey bases, and then it seems like there's a little bit of white, so a little bit of white, and then the yellow tips very beautiful. Whereas the um, upper tail covers grey. Oh, what's going on there? There's a new feather being grown. You see that little little yellow feather coming out there? That's a new feather being molted. So that's an indication of body molt. Let me just point it out. See it there. Okay, let's check for general body molt. Um, so I'm going to blow on the bird um, just to expose the feathers and we'll see if we can see any molt. See how black the feather bases are. You see that little um, breast feather growing there? So this bird is an active body molt. further shafts as well. Um, often in birds that are actively incubating they sort of lose some of the, the feathers on their bellies to create a, uh, what's called a brood patch so that increases heat transfer between the bird's body and the eggs. 
While we've got the feet here, we might as well look at that quickly. Um, okay, so this, I mean, most people would classify that as the, as the sort of most layman would call that the bird's knee, but it's actually its ankle. Um, so this is the tarsus, and that would be the tibia. In this case, the, the tibia is fully feathered, and then the femur bone is actually inside the body. You can't really see it. Um, bird's toes are also interesting. Um, Bassarine birds have these th three toes facing forward and one, one backwards. Um, and it's interesting to note that there are actually different numbers of bones in each toe. So the outer one has four, the middle one has three, and the inner toe has two bones. Whereas the, the hind toe or the hallux only has one bone. So the toes are, you know, the inner, inner one flexes less than the, the, than the outer, outer toes. Also, there's a ligament in the leg. So when the bird sits, um, the leg closes up by itself. This one is a little bit desiccated, so I don't think that's going to work. But often if you find a freshly dead bird, if you, if you sort of bend the leg, you'll see the, the foot closes by itself. Okay. That's the underwing. So the underwing covered. And then the axillary feathers or the armpit feathers. Um, these are the undertail covers here. And the bird's cloaca. Should be around here somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We can maybe see if we can find the the preen gland up here. It's going to be very small in a small bird like this. Here we go. That little heart shaped um, blob there that secretes oils that the bird um, gathers with its bill and then spreads across the feathers to act as a sort of a conditioner to keep the feathers nice and healthy. If you squeeze that, or some oil will be produced. I'm quite keen on doing that right now. Um, okay, what else have we got? Mantle feathers, nape feathers, crown. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to see all the fine facial features here. Yeah? But let's see if we can find the ears at least. Here we go. Uh, that's the bird's ear there. You see that little hole there on the side of the face? Right there. So that's the ear, sort of below the eye level. Okay, so my plan with this, with this bird is to actually uh, pluck out all the feathers and try and sort of more or less count how many um, feathers a bird bird has. It, it obviously varies a lot between species but just uh, just for fun really just to see what we can figure out. Okay, uh, stay tuned.